This video is over our test review page for our functions equations test. For number one, you are given the equation y equals 6x plus 15, and you're asked to identify the slope in the y-intercept. Remember, we're referencing slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, and we're wanting to identify the m value, mx, so that would be 6, and the b value, the plus b at the end, which would be 15. For number two, you're given the equation y equals negative 2x minus 7, and you're asked to identify the rate of change in initial value. Again, we're referencing slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b. The rate of change, m, is our mx, so that would be our negative 2. Our initial value is the plus b at the end. We don't have a plus, we have a minus, it's a minus 7, so we count that as a negative 7. For number three, we have the equation y equals 1 over 9x, and it asks you to find the slope in the y-intercept. Again, we're referencing the slope-intercept form equation, y equals mx plus b. m is our slope, so that would be our fraction 1 9th, because that's the mx value. The plus b is at the end, and as you can see, we have a plus nothing, in which case b would be 0. For number four, you're given the equation y equals five and asked to find the rate of change in initial value. We're referencing the slope-intercept form equation y equals mx plus b. You should see that there is no x value, so therefore there is no m value. m and x are always side by side, and since there's no x, there's no m, so m is zero. The only thing that is in the equation is the number five. It's a positive five. And so that would be our b value, b is 5. For number 5, you're given the equation x equals 11, and you're asked to identify the slope in the y-intercept. Now, this equation looks nothing like slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b, and so we have a different type of answer. Our slope, the rate of change, m, is labeled by the word undefined. And instead of having a b value, a y-intercept, there is no y-intercept. Instead, we have an x-intercept because it's an x equals equation. The x-intercept is 11. For number 6, we have the equation 10y minus 5x equals negative 40. And we want to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Notice how the y is completely by itself, the mx is in the middle, and the plus b is at the end. That's what we're going to do to this problem. We're going to start by moving the minus 5x to the other side so that it can go in the middle. Minus 5x changes to a plus 5x. My new equation so far is the 10y, the positive 5x, and the minus 40. Now, we have to get rid of the 10 because in our equation, y equals mx plus b, y is completely by itself. There are no extra values. 10 and y side by side means multiply, so we do the opposite. We divide. 5 divided by 10. If you were to set up 5 over 10 as a fraction, because all slopes are fractions, we can simplify that fraction. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Our slope, our rate of change, m, would be 1 half. 40 divided by 10 would give us 4. y equals 1 half x minus 4. For number 7, you're given the equation 3y equals 3x plus 12. We're comparing that to the general equation y equals mx plus b, which is slope-intercept form. In slope-intercept form, y is completely by itself on the left-hand side, and mx plus b is on the right hand side. mx is in the middle plus b at the end. In our equation, everything is almost correct. The y is on the left hand side, the 3x is in the middle, and the plus 12 is at the end. The only thing that we need to move is the value with the y. y needs to be completely by itself, so we have to get rid of the 3. The 3 and the y side by side mean multiply, so we do the opposite, we divide. Leaving us with 3 divided by 3 is 1, so that's 1x. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 
you can write your equation as y equals 1x plus 4, or you can simply write it as y equals x plus 4. If the value is a 1, you do not have to write it in front of the variable x. Either answer is correct. For number 8, we have the equation 12y minus 60 equals 4x. And again, we're comparing it to slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Remember, y is completely by itself on the left-hand side, the mx is in the middle, and the plus b is at the end. Now, when it comes to rewriting our equation, the 4x is in the correct location because it's on the right-hand side in the middle. We need to move the minus 60 to the very end. That's the plus b value. When we move minus 60, we do the opposite. We do a plus 60. And so our new equation is 12y with the 4x and then plus 60 at the end. Now, we are not finished. The y needs to be completely by itself for it to be y equals mx plus b. So we need to get rid of the 12. The 12 and the y side by side means multiply. So we do the opposite. We divide. Now, if we were to set up our fraction 4 over 12, we would simplify that fraction by dividing both by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Our fraction for our slope is 1 third. 60 divided by 12 is 5. y equals 1 third x plus 5 is our new equation. For number 9, we're given the equation 8y minus 16x plus 32 equals 0. We're comparing it to slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Remember, the y needs to be completely by itself on the left-hand side. mx needs to be in the middle, and the plus b needs to be at the end. In our problem, everything is on the left-hand side, so we have to move several pieces. Start with the mx value. Instead of a minus 16x, we do the opposite. We do a plus 16x. So we still have the 8y and we still have the 32 that we have not moved yet. All we've moved is the 16x, and it's a positive 16x now. Now we can move the next piece, which would be the plus b value. We want to move that to the end. That's the plus 32. Instead of doing plus 32, we do the opposite. We do a minus 32. The 8y is still a part of our equation. We still have the positive 16x, and now we have a minus 32 at the end. Our last step is to get rid of the 8, because in the equation y equals mx plus b, y is completely by itself. 8 and y side by side means multiply, so we do the opposite, we divide. 16 divided by 8 is 2, so that will give us a 2x. 32 divided by 8 would give us 4, so a minus 4. Our final equation is y equals 2x minus 4. For number 10, we have the equation 15x plus 5y equals negative 30. We want to rewrite it into slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Remember, y needs to be completely by itself on the left-hand side, mx in the middle, and the plus b at the end. For our equation, we need to start by moving the 15x to the other side because it's in the wrong location. It's in the front. We want to move it to the middle. Instead of 15, we do the opposite. We do a negative 15. We can rewrite our equation so far as 5y, negative 15x with the minus 30. Our last step is to get rid of the 5 because in slope-intercept form, y is completely by itself. The 5 and the y side by side means multiply, so we do the opposite, we divide. Negative 15 divided by 5, 15 divided by 5 is 3, so negative 15 divided by 5 would give us a negative 3. The negative 30 or the minus 30 divided by 5 would give us a minus 6. y equals negative 3x minus 6 is our final equation. For number 11, we're given the equation 10x plus 5y equals 30 and asked if it's linear or nonlinear. Now remember, when we're dealing with linear and nonlinear, there can be no exponents. So our equation is good there. We don't have any exponents. 
and if we have a fraction, x cannot be in the denominator. Since neither of those two things are happening in this equation, this equation is linear. For number 12, we're given the equation 7x squared plus 12y equals 34 and asked if it's linear or nonlinear. Remember, to have a linear equation, we can have no exponents. And if there's a fraction, x cannot be in the denominator. Because this problem does have an exponent, 7x squared, we are representing this as a nonlinear equation. For number 13, we have the equation x equals 14 and asked, is it linear or nonlinear? Again, for a linear equation, we can have no exponents. And if there's a fraction, x cannot be in the denominator. In this equation, x equals 14, there are no exponents, so we're good there. There are no fractions where x is in the denominator, so we check off that one as well, meaning this equation is linear. For problem number 14, we're given the equation y equals 4 over x minus 12 and asked, is it linear or nonlinear? To have a linear equation, we can have no exponents. And if there is a fraction, x cannot be in the denominator. Because x is in the denominator, the bottom part of the fraction, this is a nonlinear equation. For number 15, we're given the equation y equals 31 and asked, is it linear or nonlinear? When we're looking for linear equations, we can have no exponents. And if there's a fraction, x cannot be in the denominator. Because this equation, y equals 31, has no exponents, or fractions where x is in the denominator, this is a linear function. For number 16, it says to list all vocabulary terms that are represented by the variable m. So the variable m means rate of change. It means slope, it means unit rate, it means constant of proportionality, and it can mean coefficient. All of these terms all mean the same thing, and they are all represented by the variable m. For number 17, it asks you to list all vocabulary terms that are represented by the variable B. B stands for initial value. It also stands for y-intercept. And it stands for constant. All of these terms mean the same thing, and they are all represented by the initial value letter B. Number 18, it asks you to list all characteristics of a linear function. We know that the word linear means a straight line. In order to have a straight line, you have to have a constant rate of change. You can have no exponents if it's an equation. No fractions where x is in the denominator. And it can be written in slope-intercept form. 
that's y equals mx plus b.